New Hope Outreach Ministries, making a difference by taking the gospel from word to action. And now, today's message. I believe it. It is done. And I thought about that. And I said, that's what God said to us. That's what this message is all about. Now faith is. God, you said it. I believe it. And so it's done. And I know I'm speaking the end from the beginning. But that's what he does. That's what he's telling us to do. You said it. I believe it. And so it's done. So the title of this message today is Now Faith Is. And so we're going to start with Hebrews 11, obviously. Now Faith Is. That's the beginning. (laughs) Now Faith Is. King James And Mary's going to pull it up. Hebrews 11, 1. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you today for this word. Thank you for giving us your word today. Father, we stand on your word. We open up our hearts and our minds and our ears to hear your word today. Speak your word through me today. Reveal yourself to us today. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Use me, Lord, to speak your word. And only your word. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the things that you've done and the things that you're doing in our lives. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we that I speak it accurately. Father, that we hear it, your word accurately. that we be changed from glory to glory to glory. And that your, your anointing, that your glory be seen in us today and every day. And Father, we just thank you and praise you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, I like to look at the definition of words in scriptures. And so I want to first look at the definition of the word now. You know, the word now means without delay. And remember last week I talked about the word now updates itself. You know, every time you say the word now, it's going to update itself. Every time, when you say now, it's going to update itself each time. And then the next word is faith. The definition of the word faith means confidence, trust in a person or a thing. Belief, not based on proof. Unshakable belief. 
not based on proof, unshakable belief. The next word in that scripture is substance. That means real physical matter of which a person or a thing consists of, which has a tangible or solid presence. In the Greek, it means assurance. And then the next word is hope. That means a confident expectation, trust. Hope is an expectation. Hope is something that you can rely on. It is a rock. It it strengthens you. Hope is an action. Hope looks for the future. It looks for something greater. It looks for an expectation. Faith is believing and trusting that something is true even though you may not see it. Now, I bet you're wondering why I brought this chair up here. (laughs) Jocelyn said she was wondering why I was sitting over there, because I moved it from over there. (laughs) I moved it over here for a reason. Because I have faith in this chair. I'm going to sit in this chair just like you came up and sat in this chair. Not this chair, but the chairs that you're sitting in. I just sat down in this chair. I didn't come up to this chair. Just like you didn't come up to the chair you came in and go, I wonder, is this chair going to hold me? Let me look at it. Let me see. Hmm. I wonder, is this chair going to fall apart when I sit down in it. Did you do that when you came up to the chair or did you just do like I did? I just sat down in the chair. I didn't think about it. I didn't contemplate anything about this chair because I know that a chair constructed like this time and time again, every time I look at this, a chair that looks like this constructed just like this, Every time I sit down in a chair that looks like this, it's going to hold me. I have faith in it. I don't have to think about it. I just sit down in it. But if Jocelyn came up to me or Fred came up to me or Gary or whoever came up to me and said, well, the other day, Geneva or Betsy sat in that chair and it fell apart. (laughs) Then I might have questioned when I come up to this chair. I might say, hmm, maybe I better not sit in this chair. I might look at it first before I sit in it, or I might choose another chair. Or if the manufacturer of this chair, I read some things about chairs like this, I might think, hmm, maybe I may not sit in that chair because chairs like this fall apart. I don't have faith in chairs like this. I'm not going to sit in this chair because I've heard 
from someone reliable. It also has to be from somebody reliable. I trust what people here say. I know you. It can't be somebody off the street. It's got to be somebody I know. And I, it is reliable. They say, this chair isn't reliable. Then I'm not going to plop down in it and sit in it because I have faith in what that person said. So he's, they said it. I have faith in what that person said. I'm not going to sit in that chair. But if I know that chair is reliable, I'm going to sit in it. So that's what faith is. That's in the natural sense. Let's look at Matthew 17, 14 through 20. Let's go to what Jesus said to the disciples about faith. Let's back up, Mary. Go back up to verse 13. Uh, Go back up again. Go back again. This is a scripture about, go on to 14. Let's just go back to 14 because it's going to, I don't want to go through the whole story, but this is the parable about um, where Jesus told the disciples that if they had a, that if they had faith as a grain of mustard seed. So let's, let's just start at 14. Um, When they had come to the multitude, um, there were, when it come to a multitude, there came to them a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my If faith is a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry, I apologize. I was thinking I didn't have, you had the whole scripture. I didn't have it down on my paper. <laughs> Um, because of their unbelief, they could not cast it out. Because of their unbelief, they could not cast out. What this, the guy had a devil. He was, every time he would come to, they tried to cast him out. He would throw himself into the fire. He would throw himself, the, the boy would throw himself into to the fire. And so the man brought him, the dad had brought him to the disciples and said, hey, will you cast this, you know, my son keeps doing this. I need you to cast him out. And they tried, but it didn't work. And so he said, that, so they ended up bringing him to Jesus. And so Jesus did it. And so the man said, I mean, so the disciples said, well, why couldn't we do it? And he was like, basically you could have. Look at it in the message Bible. Same scriptures. Go to... Uh, Okay, when, not 14, but go to 19. 
when the disciples had asked Jesus off to themselves, they asked, why couldn't we throw it out? Because you're not yet taking God seriously, said Jesus. The simple truth is that if you had a mere kernel of faith, a a poppy seed, say you would tell this mountain move and it would move. There is nothing you wouldn't be able to tackle. If you had been taking God seriously, if you had been taking God seriously, that's it. That was the point. Because if you have been taking God seriously, all you would have to do is tell the mountain to move and it would move. All you'd have to do is tell the mountain to move. You just have to say it. But you got to take God seriously. You can't be playing around. If God said it, you got to believe it, and then it is done. If he said it, you got to believe it, it is done. If he said it, you got to believe it, it is done. That's what taking God seriously is. In the disciples, in their heart, that seed hadn't grown to a full plant. If you take a seed in the natural, inside the seed, if we were able to take a seed and split it open, there's a full plant. And in some, you can't do it with a mustard seed, but in a large seed, if you were able to take a seed and open it up, you'd see a full plant. So when we plant that seed in the ground, if it gets everything it needs, then a full plant will grow. So a mustard seed is very tiny, but it grows into a a large tree. So that's what God is saying. If you plant that mustard seed and you give it everything it needs, it's going to grow. So I ask you today, are you taking God seriously? How does faith come? That's not a rhetorical question. How does faith come? You know the answer. Hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's what we've been saying. This is important. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This has to be final authority in your life. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If he said it, I believe it. He said it. In here. If he said it, I believe it. If he said it, I believe it. That's what we said earlier. If he said it, I believe it. And then the last part of that, it is done. And it was done 2,000 years ago. You know, we can't talk about faith without going to Mark 11, 23 and 24. Mary, put up uh, Mark 11, 23 and 24. King James first. For verily I say unto you that whosoever... 
and whosoever is me. That's what you should be saying. It's not just me, it's you too. Whosoever is me shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. You said it. I believe it. You said it. So it's done. The first part of that, go back to 23, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whatsoever you say, that's us saying, unto the mountain, be thou removed, that's you saying, Mountain, you move and be cast in the sea and not doubt in your heart. And this is the believe that those things which you say, that's the second say, that those, those things that you say, that's number three, shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says, that's number four. So you say it a lot. And how many times do you believe it? One time. So we say it a whole lot more than we believe it. So it takes us saying it. God said it but we also have to say it. We've got to say what he says here. That's us making it final, final authority in our lives. What he says, we say. That's how we're showing we believe it. Because if we're not saying it, then we may not believe it. We got to say it out of our mouths. Let's show that in the message. Verse 23 and 24 in the message. In my message, it says, embrace this God life, which is a little bit different than what it says up there. Really embrace it. And nothing will be too much for you. Embrace this God life. Really embrace it. And nothing will be too much for you. Hey, Mary, I'm still in. Oh, okay. It's at 22. Okay. Jesus was, matter of fact, embrace this God life. Really embrace it. And nothing will be too much for you. This mountain, for instance, just say, go jump in the lake. No, shilly, no shuffling or shilly shallying. And it's as good as done. Do you know what shilly shallying in? I looked it up. Because I thought that's a strange word. That means indecisive, indecisive, vacillating, or faltering. That's what shilly-shallying is. Being indecisive, vacillating, or faltering. So don't shilly-shally. 
Don't shilly shally. <laughs> Don't vacillate. Don't be indecisive. You got to be succinct. Embrace the God life. You got to say, mountain, be moved. Get in the sea. Go jump in the sea. Cancer, be gone. Finances, come. Whatever. Tell it to go. Or if you need it, tell it to come. Oh, I need it to come. So come. That's shilly shally. Well, maybe I do. Well, maybe I don't. I don't know. I don't know. That's being indecisive. That's vacillating back and forth. I don't know. What do you want for dinner? I don't know. You want to go over here? I don't know. That's being shilly shally. Whatever. That's faltering. That's not what God calls us to be. That's not the God kind of life. It says embrace the God life. Embracing the God life is going and sitting in that chair because you know that chair is going to hold you. Well, I don't know if that chair is going to hold me or not. If you know that chair is going to hold you, you're going to sit in it. Okay, let's put all this together. Now faith is. It's the substance of things hoped for. Remember I said now means it's going to update every time you say now. It's present tense. Now. Now. Every time I say now, it's going to update. Let's look at Hebrews 11, 1 in the Amplified. I like it in the Amplified because it takes everything I said, all of those definitions, and puts it together in one verse. It says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. It's the title deed. It's the confirmation. Faith is the title deed. It's the assurance. I have a car out there that I I didn't pay for, really. My dad basically gave it to me. My other car, my Rogue, was 195,000 miles on it, I think. And it was starting to go. And I went, I, I didn't, wasn't going to him to say anything about the, that, really. I just was telling him. And he said, we're not driving the Mazda. I only have a few more, basically, dollars to pay on the Mazda. You can have it. I'll finish paying it off. I'll get the title, and, well, you can buy it from me. Well, you know how parents say, you can buy it from me. You can give me, I don't know, 
a couple thousand dollars. Well, that couple thousand dollars, I paid him a couple times, and he said, you can have it. It wasn't a couple thousand dollars. We'll just put the title in your name. You can put the title in your name, and you can have it. People could come up to me and say, I was driving the car before I got the title, before he finished paying it off, because the rogue was starting to go. I sold the rogue. I was driving the Mazda. Before he paid it off, I sold the rogue to somebody, got whatever I asked for it, but I was driving the Mazda. I didn't have a title. He had the title. Well, he didn't even have the title because he hadn't paid it off yet. He finally got the title, or paid it off, rather, waiting on the title. Someone could come to me and say, that's not your car. I didn't have the title. But do you know I would say, yes, it is my car. Do you know why I would say that? Why would I say that? Because my father told me it was my car. Do you know why? Because my daddy said so. Do you know why? Because I trust my daddy. He gave me his word. He's not going to go back on his word. He didn't, he hadn't given me a title yet. But he wasn't going to go back on his word. He said it. I believed it. He said it. So it was done. That was it. No one was going to take that from me. It was done. When he said it, I just praised the Lord and walked out the door, got the keys, drove off. He got the title. He hand, he, we did whatever we needed to do. I got the title in my name, and it was done, literally done then on paper. But it was a long time before all that happened, and I was driving around in it. But he said it, I believed it, he said it, it was done. That's all it took. I had faith in his word because I trusted him. I trusted his word. Let's put it in terms of what our Heavenly Father says. In 1 Peter 2.24, he says, By his stripes, by Jesus' stripes, by his own stripes, you are healed. It's in his word. It's right there. He said it in his word. I believe it. He said it. So it's done. I trust his word. What if somebody comes up to you and says, no, that's not true. What are you going to say? Yes, it is. I have it in his word. It's right here. First Peter 2.24. It says it right here. 
I believe it. It is done. Having done all to stand, I stand. I believe it. It is done. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. It is done. My daddy said it. It's a real fact. It's a real fact my daddy gave me that Mazda. It's a real fact. My daddy said, by his stripes, I'm healed. God said it's done. It's done. Let's look at Abraham. Genesis 22, 1 through 14 in the Amplified. Now, after these things, God tested the faith and commitment of Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. God said, take now your son, your only son of promise, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. So Abraham got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he split the wood for the burnt offering. And then he got up and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day of travel, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Abraham said to his servants, Settle down and stay here with the donkey, and the young man and I will go over there and worship God, and we will come back to you. Then Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on the shoulder of Isaac, his son, and he took the fire, fire pot, in his own hand and the sacrificial knife and the two of them walked on together and Isaac said to Abraham my father and he said here I am my son look the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for the burnt offering and Abraham said my son God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering so the two walked on together When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood and bound Isaac, his son, and placed him on the altar on the top of the wood. And Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he answered, here I am. And the Lord said, do not reach out with the knife in your hand against the boy and do nothing to harm him. For now I know that you fear God with reverence and profound respect since you have not withheld from me your son, your only son of promise. Then Abraham looked up and glanced around and behold behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering, ascending sacrifice instead of his son. So Abraham named that place the Lord will provide and is said to this day on the mountain of the Lord, it it will be seen and provided. In verse 5, Abraham said to his servant, settle down and stay here with the donkey. The young man and I will go over there and I will go over there and worship God. And we, we will come back to you. Not I, 
will come back. He said, we will come back. And also, if you notice, when Isaac asked, Father, where is the sacrifice? You know, usually we bring a sacrifice. What did Abraham said to say to him? The Lord will provide a lamb. And you know, one thing I was thinking every time we read this, we think about Ab- I mean Isaac as being a little boy, you know, like maybe eight years old. I was reading in the commentary. Guess how old Abraham? I mean Isaac was like 29 years old. So we're not talking about a little boy. We're talking about a man, a young man. So Isaac believed Abraham. Abraham believed God that he was going to provide a sacrifice. Even before, if God, again, God had said it. I believe it. He said it. It's done. Just another example. God had told him He had taken him, if you remember, and I'm not going to go to the scripture, but it's in Genesis. He said, he took him to the stars and he said, look up, Abraham. Your seed is going to be the number of stars that you see here. Bring me the the microphone. how many that's how many your seed is going to be so he believed what God said so I believe it he believed what God said if he believed it then that's how he could take Isaac up to Mount Moriah and tell the servant, I'm going to be back. We're going to be back. Not I'm going to be back. We're going to be back. And he can say to Isaac, God's going to provide a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. We have a covenant with Almighty God. Abraham, God established a covenant with Abraham. And in doing so, we have a a covenant, a sta- God established a covenant with us. In Genesis seventeen seven, it says, "I will establish my covenant between the me and thee, and thy seed after thee, in their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and thy seed after thee." So that means we have a covenant with him as well. Hallelujah. 
So that covenant is established with us too. So I challenge you today to let's take God seriously. Let's embrace God's life, the God kind of life. And let's embrace it. And when God says something in his word, we believe it. When he says it, know that it's done. Just like the song, you said it, God, I believe it. You said it, it is done. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. If you said it, I believe it. If God says it, I believe it. Find the scripture. Find what it is you need. If he said it, I believe it. If he said it, it's done. It's already a finished work. It's already done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Now faith is. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, that, I'm finished. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah.